Solo Leveling is arguably one of the most popular webtoon series ever created, largely thanks to its intricate world building, character, and story writing. So it wasn't surprising that people were looking forward to the anime adaptation, but I'm sure there are still plenty of mysteries regarding certain aspects of the series. That's why in this video, I wanted to cover the hunters in general, mainly how they came to exist in the world of solo leveling, the ranking system for hunters, and the various hunter types. And before we begin, there will be spoilers for the anime, webtoon, and web novel, so here's a spoiler warning just in case. As always, if you enjoyed this breakdown for solo leveling and you want more content like this in the future, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel as well. So what exactly are hunters and how did they first come to exist in the world of solo leveling? To explain the term hunter itself, it's simply used to classify humans who have managed to awaken special powers and abilities after they were exposed to magic for the very first time. And they only manifested their special powers around the same time that gates started appearing around the world. But what are gates? Well, they are magical portals that connect to various pocket dimensions belonging to the chaos world called dungeons, and they are home to hostile magical creatures such as goblins, orcs, dragons, undeads, and many more. Furthermore, dungeons are normally led by a powerful boss level monster and only after defeating the boss that the gates can be closed. But because conventional human weapons were ineffective against the magical creatures inside of dungeons, awakened humans became the only ones who could defeat them. This was essentially the basis that led to awakened humans being called hunters, and also because of the vast amount of otherworldly resources that can be extracted from dungeons, like essence stones and mana crystals, becoming a hunter and everything related to their line of work was quickly turned into a global billion dollar industry. And despite the amount of money one can earn from this newfound industry, not all awakened humans would become hunters as there was still a portion of people who decided to simply live as civilians and have other jobs. That said, it will also be around this time that governments around the world created the Hunter Association, organizations responsible for handling and monitoring all matters related to hunters, and with the establishment of this governing body, more systems and procedures were introduced as well to increase the efficiency and effectiveness of dungeon raids, while also helping to increase the survivability of hunters. For example, awakened humans that choose to become hunters had to first be evaluated for the amount of mana they possess, and this would determine a person's hunter ranking which I'll be talking about shortly. So continuing on, once someone received their hunter rank, only then a license from the hunter association is given and after becoming an official hunter, they can either visit online forums or groups to apply for strike squads as a freelancer, or wait for the hunter association to assign them with jobs and it's normally based around the areas the hunters will be living in. Although for hunters that choose the former, it's usually riskier and more dangerous while choosing the latter means they earn less money. That's why hunters often chose to join guilds instead because they can usually earn more money under them and there was a greater degree of safety as well, since guilds are more organized or they have better equipment and resources. But even then, it still depends on the type, size, and fame of the guild, because the low level ones are sometimes even more dangerous and the mortality rates were higher. In any case, regarding the ranking system found in solo leveling, in addition to being used for measuring the mana capacity and abilities of awakened humans, it also serves as an indicator for the danger levels of gates and the various magical creatures that dwell inside dungeons. And there are a total of 7 ranks, with each corresponding to a letter in the alphabet with rank E being the weakest, followed by rank D, rank C, rank B, rank A, and finally rank S being the strongest. Now even though this ranking system was recognized internationally and mostly used by all governments, China does have their own metric for ranks. So instead of using the standard alphabet system, their hunters were ranked according to a star system with 1 star being the lowest while 5 stars was the highest. But there was an exception for their strongest hunter Liu Zigang, who was awarded 7 stars due to his strength and achievements. But going back to the international ranking system, aside from showing the inherent power levels of a hunter, it can sometimes be related to the income and reputation of set hunters as well. Also, once a hunter receives their ranks, they are pretty much stuck with it forever because when a person awakens their powers, their stats will basically set in stone and no amount of training or experience will be able to increase their ranks. However, there were rare occasions where hunters are able to experience a second awakening, whereby all their existing power levels greatly increases and normally their ranks will jump significantly as well. With that said, let's take a look at the individual ranks, and I'll also provide an estimate to their corresponding levels to the player system of Sun Jin Wu, but this is purely based on my own speculations, so you can let me know in the comments down below if you agree with my assessments for the individual ranks. Now starting with the weakest rank E hunters, they had the lowest amount of mana and were barely stronger than the average human being. They were often ridiculed by other hunters and given the worst possible jobs to handle, which is also why they had terrible pay as well. So in terms of the player system, rank E hunters will probably vary from level 1 to 5 or maybe even lower. 
Rank D hunters were next and not much can be said about them aside from being slightly better than rank E hunters. This meant their level should be around 5 to 10 in the player system. Moving on were the rank C hunters, and they're considered to be average in terms of overall mana level, with their firepower being equivalent to a military tank. As for how they will compare in the player system, their levels might be at the 10 to 20 range give or take. Going up a tier is the rank B hunters, they are significantly more powerful and better at handling more dangerous gates than hunters below them, and it's estimated that it takes around 10 rank C hunters just to defeat a single rank B hunter. So in correspondence to the player system, rank B hunters should be at level 20 to 40 considering how much stronger they are to rank C hunters. Next is the A rank hunters and at this level, they can already be classified as elites, possessing not only exceptional strength but they are highly experienced and skilled as well. Also at this level, there's a visible discrepancy between the strength of A rank hunters. One A rank could have power almost reaching the S rank while another is only barely stronger than a single rank B. But either way, A rank hunters were still highly sought after by guilds simply because of the significant increase in power. In terms of the player system, A rank hunters should be comparable to roughly level 40 to 60 or maybe even higher. Now then, the final tier is the S rank hunters and they're considered to be the pinnacle of strength and power. Their mana levels were so incredible that it far exceeds the limits of what the hunter association's measuring technology was capable of detecting. It was for this reason the S rank hunters were extremely rare and highly valued by society. Countries would even try to push them from other nations by offering incentives such as wealth, fame and power. This is why S rank hunters would often operate with impunity. And regardless of the destruction or crimes they committed, governments did not have the authority or power to prosecute them. But to continue, much like A rank hunters, the disparity between the strength of hunters in the S rank were actually the highest among the other ranks. This meant that it was impossible to measure their strength according to their raw power or mana levels, so an international point system that records their overall achievements was used instead. With this, a new title called National Level Hunter was created as well, and this was used to classify extremely powerful S rank hunters who have managed to clear at least one S rank gate, and like the name implies, they are hunters who can literally rival a nation's entire military in strength. Currently, the only known national level hunters are Thomas Andre, Liu Zikang, Christopher Reed, and Shidaf Bachan. And since the power level of S rank hunters was outside the scope of the norm, their level in the player system would probably start at level 60 and above, because as stated by Gogun He, it was almost impossible to differentiate between hunters with S, SS, or SSS ranks. With the ranking system explained, we'll move on to the hunter job classes but before that, I also want to mention that even though the evaluation system for ranks is quite accurate, there are rare cases where a hunter is capable of manipulating their mana output so that they can earn a lower rank than their actual ones. This type of hunters is called false rankers and they are usually motivated by weaker intentions such as to kill low rank hunters for fun but again, it rarely happens. Nonetheless, even though a hunter can be easily distinguished by their acquired ranks, they were also separated according to the roles they fulfilled within the hunter community. And it's because of the diverse specialization of a hunter's job class, along with the skills they possess that made dungeon raids become easier and more effective. Now regarding the job class, it can be separated into two distinct categories, the combat type and the non-combat type, and it's further divided into six more specific classes, fighter, assassin, tanker, mage, ranger, and healer. And similar to the ranking system, it seems that a person's job class is set in stone as well after they awaken, although it's unknown what is the metric used by the hunter association for discovering the job class of a hunter. Having said that, let's go over each of the job classes and starting with the fighter. They fall under the combat type category. Hunters with this class are considered to be melee combat specialists that engages enemies at close range, and they normally utilize various kinds of weapons or martial arts when fighting. And because of the nature of their role, they will normally possess enhanced strength, speed, and durability as well. And for fighters such as the S rank Park Yun Ho, they can sometimes manifest rare abilities like transformation that he uses to further increase his overall physical capabilities. Next we have Assassin and they are classified under the combat type. They are highly skilled in close range combat and the fastest among the other classes thanks to their exceptional agility and speed. Because of this, Assassins were especially effective at dealing with mages. Additionally, almost all Assassins possess the skill Stealth, which allows the user to completely conceal their presence both physically and magically. Moving on is the tanker class and they fall under the non-combat type although if needed, they are able to take on combat situations as well. And obviously from their name, tankers specialize in providing defensive support to other hunters by attracting the attention of enemies or serving as a frontline shield for ranged attackers and healers. They were also the most durable as compared to the other classes and they can receive heavy amounts of damage before being taken down. Also most tankers possess the skill taunt and it allows them to provoke enemies to attack them but it can only be used against enemies that are weaker than the user. 
Then we have the mage class and they are hunters who specializes in sorcery. They are a mix between combat and non-combat type, making them one of the most versatile classes. That's because they have access to a variety of offensive and defensive magical abilities like elemental spells, first magic that can apply debuff on enemies, summoning magic to summon creatures that can help in battle, barrier magic to provide protection or for trapping enemies. Some mages can even use very simple forms of healing magic. The only drawback for a mage is the inherent lack of physical capabilities and they are weak against close range attackers. But for s rank mages like Choi Jong In and Yuri Olof, they can easily overcome this issue. Now as for the ranger class, they are combat type hunters that excel in ranged combat, but unlike mages that use ranged magic attacks, rangers rely on physical ranged attacks instead, mostly using bows or firearms in combat, but aside from their marksmanship skills, not much can be said about rangers. Finally, we are the healer class and they are distinctly non-combat type, excelling in providing aid through the use of advanced healing magic. They can also utilize support abilities of magic to buff and enhance existing stats and abilities of other hunters as well. This is why they are considered to be one of the core pillars during a dungeon raid, and why intelligent monsters will often target the healers first because once they are gone, it will normally be the end for a raiding party. <laughs> But with that explained, that's everything you need to know about the hunters of solo leveling, their origins, how the rank system works, and the various job classes that's occupied by them. So hopefully you managed to learn something new about some of the intricate world building that can be found in solo leveling. And let me know what are your thoughts on the series, as well as if I missed anything in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video and want more solo leveling content, feel free to let me know. Remember to drop a like, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification button for more breakdowns like this in the future. Thanks for watching, and as always, stay safe everyone.